Book five, number three, Concerto in G minor, second movement, the Adagio. I am proposing that we take this from the ishy bit around bar 36. So take a look at your second page. We are going to shift from first position to second position, then go back to first, and then a dive up to fourth position. The little Roman two that's marked in your music is to tell you to stay on the second string, which is A string. So don't get confused and try and play second position. Your positions will never be marked in your music. To comply with that direction, we're going to shift to fourth position. Now that's, that's fine, it's not a big deal. We've done it before. We did it in the preceding Vivaldi A minor slow movement, the second piece in book five. But it can take a little bit of practice and the best way to practice it is by identifying the ghost note. So let's just isolate those two bars and look at what we're really doing. Play me the B flat to D natural in first position like this. Now play it shifting to second position. One, two, go. I don't think about it much because I'm only going to second, but it does help to know that your first finger is moving from a B flat up to a C natural. It's going a whole tone to second position. And when you get there, then you put your second finger on and you'll hit the D natural. So play those two sounds again, B flat D. Now shifting. Yeah, and try and be deliberate about shifting with the first finger. So you actually could play this. Have a go, ready, play. Yeah, so my hand's moving up to second position and then I put the second finger on. One more time. And again. Last time. Now elide the C natural, don't play it, just shift to it. Again. One more. Cool. Let's play the fourth finger that comes next and the shift back to first position. So we get. Again. One more time. Okay, let's go on. Uh-huh, so we just got seven notes and. Now brace yourself, we're heading from first position to a flat fourth position. So, my first finger's going to an E flat. Hmm, nasty. That's the sound I'm looking for. There's the geography of it. If you need to, play it with a flat four and then move your first finger up to that spot. That's what it's going to feel like when you get there. Cool? Let's try. Ooh, I just skidded into mine. Go again. Again. B natural. E flat. Now put the four on. A flat, what a horrible note, right? That's the sound we're looking for. Test it. So it's like that sour feeling that we practiced back in the first movement when we played. Okay, that same A flat that I always describe as the sour note. Let's try B natural up to E flat again and then place the fourth finger on. So this is what we should hear. E flat, A flat. They're the three sounds we're looking for. Ready, play. Again. Again. Now, I've got to be careful here. I really want to play an E natural because I like the ringing sound so much better. I like playing, but I've got to keep my E flat. It's that horrible, horrible note. Okay, let's try this. Ready, play. Ready, play. Make sure your first finger's staying on. It should get the E flat always. E flat. 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 E fl
flat, then put the phone. Again, play. Keep it onto the E flat. One more time. E flat. Yay! Okay, you ready to put it all together? We've got one, two, four, one, three, two, one, shift to fourth position. Two. I like playing the four three two immediately. I know that my A flat four to G is a semitone. Three to my second finger F is a whole tone. Two. Then I have to shift back to second position, but it's a ringing D natural, so that's usually pretty easy to find. Let's have a go at it. Separate bows for everything. Don't worry about any slurs. Ready, play. B flat. Second position. Put the phone. Back to first. E flat. Three right beside it. Two a tone away. Second position. Cool. Let's go again. So it's first position, second position, first position, fourth position, second position. Make sure it's marked in your music, otherwise it's really hard to play. Again, separate bows. B flat to start. Second position. Put the four on. Back we go to first. Up to flat fourth position. Three beside it. Two. Shift to second. Yeah, cool, it's in tune. I just snuck that in hoping you wouldn't notice. Or after you play the D natural, put the three right beside for E flat. Shift back a semitone. Yeah, nice easy ending. Let's try it as it's written with its bowing. Ready, play. Back to first. Fourth. Right beside. Two. Shift down. Put three on. Great. Let's do that chunk again. It's only four bars, but these four bars are pretty pivotal. Okay. If you can get these these four and the next four, you are home and hosed. The rest of the movement is so easy. Again. Shift up. Put on. Shift back. Stay there. Zoom to flat fourth. Second. Squish. Move. Retake to the tip. That's another good thing to practice. Retaking to the tip and landing with control. Okay, one more time, that little bit. Don't expect to have it perfect if this is the first day you're working on it. Okay, it takes a while. And it's a really good idea to work through that breakdown of just putting down the ghost note, you know, five or ten times for five or ten days and really building that foundation very solidly for yourself. Okay, again. one stop the video here and go back to the start and just play that much again if you're ready to do the next bit we're going to move back into second position so we just played our C natural sneak your first finger into that spot so your hand is in second position and now we're ready to start in second and go to third let's go separate bows third position put the front back to a C sharp flat fifth position so I wonder what note my first finger would be moving to flat fifth position sounds like an F natural to me yeah the easiest way to do anything is to play the note first in first position so that you know what sound you're aiming for and then once you've got that worked out play it in its position that you're actually trying to aim for so my notes that I'm playing 
I've got a C sharp. I'm going to move my first finger from C sharp up to F natural. Let's just do that. There's two sounds. Okay. Ready? Feels like you're moving just to where your violin joins onto the fingerboard. And as you do that, your thumb is going to come around. It doesn't have the same orientation anymore. So let me play it this way for you. Oh yeah, I'm shifting with my arm. Who knew? Shifting with the arm is the way to go. Oh, my bad habit of wearing all black. Okay, there we go. Now you can see my elbow. Oh yeah, okay, my arm's doing all the shifting for me. Thanks. Just thought I should check that was the case. Okay, let's play it one more time. Now drop the four on. We're looking for a B flat, which sounds like this. Okay, C sharp, F natural, B flat. Let's have a go. And again. Drop the four on. This is why it's so important to have your hand in the right place. If you're still under your violin back over here, you can't get your fourth finger on. It just won't reach. Okay, so you've got to have rotation in your arm so the fourth finger drops. We're always about moving our arms so the fingers can drop into their spot, never reaching with the fingers. One more time, C sharp. Hoik up to F. There's my rotation to make sure my fourth finger can drop like rain. Okay, one bow per note. Ready, go. And again. And again. One more time. Now let's put all the extra stuff in the middle. We've got. Don't really play the F, just get there. Put the four on. Again. Hift. I meant to say shift. I was thinking about heft and shift. And it just came out wrong. Shift with your arm again. Squish the three beside just like last time. Leave a space for two just like last time. Shift down with two just like last time, but only the third position. And stay there. And move the one back just like last time. So this is a great spot to try and find the patterns. Both times we're playing one, shift, two, four, one, three, two, one, four, three, two, two, three, two, one, 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 two. Both times. It's the same set of fingering. It's just that the second time we've moved it up a tone. Okay, big deal. Whatever. Simple as. So all our positions are plus one and all our notes are plus one. But we're telling the same story just in a slightly higher pitch of voice. Why is that happening to my camera? I don't know, but I don't really want to look at the top of my head, so I presume you don't either. Okay, let's play from bar 36. Let's have a go. What's the worst that can happen? We understand the principles of what we're doing. We've got the shifting clearly marked in the music, and if you need help, you can always just rewind and do the last two minutes of this again. Simple. Ready, B flat, tip of your bow. Move with one. Move on two. One back. Lift and shift to second position. Shift to third. Hoik with the one. Okay, once you've got that, the rest is going to be easy. So, let's play the rest of the piece. Okay, I lied. There's one other bit we should just take a quick look at. It's in bar 53 and 54. 
And you know how I was saying the easiest way to play something is in first position, just play the notes and then play it with the shifting? Check this out. This is what happens in bar 53. Not quite that legato or glissando, but we're going to play the second time in fifth position for a beautiful echo. Okay, the extra little bit, bar 53 and 54 and 55 and 56. So bar 53 is going to happen in first position. In 54, we shift up on our second finger. It takes us from a C natural up to a G natural. And then we put the third finger on. Oh, it's twinkle. How good is that? Wonderful. Now, we're going to practice that shift a few times because that sets up the whole next phrase. So it's worth marking in your music that after the C natural, we're in fifth position and we stay in fifth position until the solo, which is in third position at bar 61. Let's play bar 53. All good. Bar 54, start with a C natural. Go to the ghost note. Put the three on. Take it across to D string. Make sure your arm helps you. Just worth noticing that you play G natural then an F sharp for the trill. I often hear the trill start on an F kind of a natural and then ooze into F sharp, which is not what we want. Use your second finger on the G to set up the one, squish white right in behind it, like that. Keep your fingers right on the tips. Let's play from 53 again and I won't stop and talk about the shift, we'll just do it. And. That's a good spot to use as much bow as you need, not as much as you have available to you on those semi quavers. Rahan pony, they're just short bows, okay? One more time from 53. Starting at the tip of your bow, molto espressivo with beautiful singing vibrato. Watch out for the shift to second position in bar 21. Make sure it's not. And maybe just note for yourself that we're playing one, three, two, one, four. There's an F sharp there that you're gonna have to reach for. And it's good to notice that now, okay? Not when you're trying to play the note. You stay in second position until bar 23 when you shift to third position. 24, come back to second, 25, come back to first. Um, and I think the rest should be pretty straightforward, right? By now we're pretty good at diagnosing position changes. If not, you'll be able to see my hand and where I'm shifting. Okay, let's go. Third. 
fade away, prepare, here we go. Second position. Third. Second. Fifth. Right up on top. Back to third. I think it's our other triple piano ending. And it's got a lot of the same feeling in the shifting, especially in the third position. I hope that's hopeful. I hope that's helpful, not hopeful. I'm hopeful that's helpful. Let me know how you go. My dog's now complaining and would like to exit because I've stopped playing, so there's nothing to hang around for. <laughs>